Hello, 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 and welcome to Manifest on Purpose Mindset Show Backstage. I am your host, Kimberly Williams. I host that show, and on that show, I help you align your mindset with the things that you really want in your life so that you can create the best version of yourself. You can find that show right below in your YouTube feed. Let me start with some gratitude. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for liking this video. And thank you for sharing it with your friends. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the newest release videos. Today, I'm going to be going backstage of conversation number 104. Practice makes perfect. It's a manifestation technique. This conversation is one of the throwbacks. For the end of the year, I've been replaying some of the greatest conversations of the Manifesto on Purpose Mindset show in 2021, and this one made the cut. I must say I was impressed with this one. Anyway, I want you to... Go and look down in your feed if you haven't checked this video out yet and make sure that you listen to it before you listen to that. Come back to the video to get a little inside information about that conversation. Practice makes perfect. We hear that a lot, right? It's talking about the things that we want to grow in in our life. They say, keep practicing, keep practicing, and you'll be real good at it. Well, that's what this technique is all about. But that's not what my conversation is about. My conversation is about the techniques in general. The reason why I really, really went into this technique is because for number one, I love visualization techniques. With techniques, I've learned that they're very useful tools. And they're just that, tools to help you manifest. I took a, a long study and deep dived into these different manifestation techniques. And don't get me wrong, I love manifestation techniques. And there are still a few that I use today. Visualization is the main one. But I found out that each one of these techniques had one thing in common. And that one thing in common is the mind. So in this conversation today, I'm trying to let you know that you are the magic to the manifestation. You are the magic to the technique. The techniques are not just manifesting things because they're techniques. The techniques are manifesting your intentions because of your mind. So everything that you do with a technique, you can do it with you your mind. And that's the point of practice makes perfect. As I said, I actually love creative visualization techniques. There's nothing like it. They're simple, easy, and it's something that you can do almost anywhere or anytime. You don't even have to think about it or plan for it. You don't need any other tools besides your mind. And in this conversation, I told you how to use the technique. And I told you through two examples. One of the examples was on a job that I was working that I had to use my hands in. I was having a difficult time in that job learning how to coordinate my hands at the speed that I needed to in order to keep up. And it bothered me because it, it upset some of my coworkers. Sorry. <laughs> it bothered me. I went home and apparently it was on my mind when I went to sleep because I dreamed about it. But in the dream, I can remember watching my hands intensely as I was doing the work. It almost felt as if I really was doing the work. And I went to work the next day and I noticed that I really was doing the work. And that made me much more confident. And I was able to pick up my speed through that boost in confidence. So I was able to practice unknowingly, unintentionally in my mind in order to create the outcome that I wanted. 
Isn't that beautiful? That's something that you can do too. Think about it. Is there something that you've been trying to get the hang of for a long time and it's kind of been difficult to you? Make sure that before you go to sleep, you're studying that thing. You're thinking about it. And maybe you'll get a nice little dream in your sleep <laughs> to help you get through it or to help you overcome in that area. There was also another area that I discussed that this worked for me, and this is in public speaking. Listen, don't tell any of my peers about this, okay? They don't need to know. This is just between me and you. What had happened was, <laughs> you know when you hear that. Anyway, during the time I was very, very busy when I was speaking because I had so many leadership roles. I had so many responsibility in the, in the organization. So it made it difficult for me to sit down and write speeches and practice them over and over again so that on the day of my speech, it would come out perfect. I didn't do all that. That's why I said, don't tell them. <laughs> They'll know that I cheated. But no, I didn't do all that. What I really did was on the morning that I had to present, I would think about it. Maybe I'm not just going to say even just the morning, but sometime during the week, every now and then, I would just be formulating my speech in my mind, just thinking about it, what I would say, the basics of it, the foundation of it, and all of that. Then on the morning of it, I would kind of put it together in my head and on my way there to present I would be imagining myself presenting that speech. And when I got up in front of my audience, speech was good. So that's another way that you can use this. And actually, there are studies, if you want to research this, there are studies where they study athletes and and find the same type of information that the people that are really out there sweating, grinding, practicing, and the people that are using their imagination to do that practice come out with similar results. And this is more than one study. So be more, be, go out and study. Don't take my word for it. Go out and research it and study it to see what it, you know, what you get out of it. But you can also try this because it's important. We're in an age of mentalism. The all is mind. Everything has to go through the mind. No matter what technique you use, no matter what you believe, none of it is possible without going through the mind. That's why I stress the fact that mindset is so important because I don't care what it is that you're dealing with. You're going to have to, at some point, use your mind. And if you don't have a mindset of growth, Things will be challenging and difficult for you. So that's why I stress that you should always be working on your mind. The tools and techniques that you use, they're so fun. I love them. I love them. And the cool thing about techniques I want you to know, and I'm not trying to push you away altogether from techniques, because I will tell you this, you will manifest through whatever way you can believe in. So if you believe that you like that candle and it's going to happen for you, guess what? It's going to happen for you, but it's not going to happen for you because you lit that candle. It's going to happen for you because of your belief in lighting that candle. So understand that no matter what it is. And then when you look at these techniques, such as journaling or scripting or even a vision board, all of those things are intentional in getting these things to play in your subconscious mind to create programs. And we already know that when the subconscious creates these programs, 
that's what manifests in your life. So that's why it's important to have good mind health. And there's other ways that you can use this too. Like I said, you can practice on things, study for tests. That was my thing too, because I always had anxiety for taking tests. I did. And as I got older, I became aware of that, you know, this is an anxiety. So what I would do is I would imagine myself taking a test before I took the test. And by the time I got to the test, I was relaxed because it wasn't just like something new being thrown on me. I had already practiced it. I also do that because you know from a few conversations ago that I am an introvert slash empath. I also use this when I know that I'm going to be around a group of people. I think about the function or activity before I go to kind of get me in a calm, relaxed state. And then when I'm there, I feel much calm, much calmer, and I feel more relaxed. I also use this for pain relief. Sometimes we sit there in pain and instead of just meditating or spending quiet time, it's hard. I know. <laughs> Instead of doing those things, sometimes all we can say is I hurt here or I hurt there, you know, but when you're doing that, you're still meditating because that's focus. You're focusing on the pain. So what I do is I focus on removing the pain. And basically, I'll go over that here just briefly. I did a whole conversation on this technique before. But basically, what I do in that technique is wherever the pain is in my body, let's say, for instance, if it's in my head, I imagine myself shrink down to the size big enough to be inside of my head. And while I'm in there, I have a bucket and I have a shovel and you can use any tools that you like. You know, you don't have to use a shovel. You can use a rake. You can use a stick or whatever, but you need something that's representing you taking that pain out of your body. And so what I'll do is whatever area the, the pain is in, I'll highlight that area red in my body. And what I would do is I would imagine myself scooping that pain out and putting it into the bucket, or either I'll imagine myself scooping that pain out and throwing it over my shoulder. I know it sounds silly. <laughs> I know it does, but let me tell you, it feels good. When I do this, you're talking about automatically out, not even remember drifting off to sleep, waking up feeling lovely. Yes, and you can do that with any area of your body. It's just all about taking your focus off what you don't want and putting your focus or placing your focus where you want it to be. Remember, you're going to use your mind anyway for other things. You may as well use it in a way that benefits you. And that's the beauty of these techniques. And just briefly to go over that technique again, all you're really doing is imagining that Whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish is already happening. And you can do that in so many ways. That's why I have moved away from a lot of the techniques because I usually just go to my mind to visualization and imagination. Watch it happen the way that you want it to happen. I make myself happy. I think about things that are going to make me happy. And in a few moments, I'm laughing and smiling and everything's okay. There's so many things to do this. There's so many reasons or so many ways you can do this. So I dare you to try it. I dare you to try to use your mind sometimes. But like I said, if you're using the techniques and they're working for you, don't rock the boat. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Continue using what works for you because that's what you believe in. But 
if you feel like and you believe that, you know, it's it's in my mind. Whatever I want to do, I can make it happen through my mind. You can do that as well. I just want you to know that you got freedom of choice. You got freedom of choice. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. I love you to life. This is how you manifest on purpose.